Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an unboxing and initial impressions of the LePro 3. It was recently announced and going to be released on the 2nd of November. It's going to be actually for about $299, promising a lot of high-end specs at a very reasonable price, at least at launch. This is actually a new device from Elico in the US market. Let's go ahead and check it out. The box is very minimalistic on the top. All we have is the LE branding on top. Let's go ahead and flip it over. We have LE Co's name. It's the LePro 3 64 gig model. This is the base model that we get. It's a 5.5 inch full HD display, 403 PPI, Qualcomm Snapdragon 821, the latest version of the processor, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of UFS 2.0 storage, 16 megapixel rear facing camera with autofocus and, autofocus and face detection autofocus, dual LED flash, 8 megapixel 1.4 uh, micron sensor front facing camera and we have uh, near field communication so we do have NFC this is one of the nice things that we start seeing from Chinese phones coming to the US that they are supporting NFC as this is popular here and of course we have an over 4000 milliamp battery that's built in and that's just typical here because that's the standard for the way they do it it supports Qualcomm charging 3.0 we have Dolby Atmos uh, as well of course this is supported by going to the LE mall uh, it will be released on the 2nd of November to be able to pre-order and it's going to be for around $299. Extremely very, very nice price. First thing, we're greeted directly with the device. Uh, it looks like it's a more of a light purplish color. Let's go ahead and pick it up and see what color it is. Um, it says, please read the user guide before inserting a nano SIM. And there's some plastic on it. We got a pair of earbuds. Uh, these should be USB type C earbuds. A quick charge 3.0 uh, brick. US plug and we have USB type A to USB type C cable nice white cable here the adapter this is the uh, USB type C to three and a half millimeter headphone jack plug and of course we have some information here at that where it is I needed the uh, sim removal tool and then oh hey look we have a, a nice little neoprene case so not bad out of the box let's go ahead and take off the plastic So we have power, volume rocker around the right side. Now stick at the back. It has a very nice, oh wow, the unibody metal design here is extremely well built. Now I had some hands on on this before and it didn't feel like it's good. I and mean, I'm thinking it's just because it was just a very busy uh, environment at the time. Uh, we do have uh, you know dual grills at the bottom. Only one of them is a speaker. We have USB type C connector here. That's for charging and audio. You notice we're missing the headphone jack. On the right side, uh, we have power, volume rocker. It's inverted from the Nexus style, so you have them up where uh, the volume is here. Now, unfortunately, no, there's no indentation here, but I mean, obviously it's the first one and it sits kind of a natural position here. And on the back, we have the fingerprint sensor, almost looks like a mirror, that's how shiny it is. We have the 60 megapixel camera, the dual flash. Again, this has uh, autofocus and phase detection autofocus. Then we have the antenna bands up there, the LE branding with the antenna bands on the bottom. Nothing on this side other than the SIM tray, and there is no uh, support for SD cards here. We do have the front-facing camera. Uh, again, it's an 8-megapixel front-facing shooter. Let's go ahead and power it up for the first time. Now, as it's booting up, one of the main things a lot of people are going to be pulling on is that this is very similar, in design at least, uh, from the sense of specs to the OnePlus 3. This is the OnePlus 3. I'm going to go ahead and shift it on to the left side. Uh, OnePlus 3 has a power button and the SIM card uh, inserting here. And what we have here is the power and the volume. On the left side, we have the uh, volume rocker on the OnePlus 3, and then we have the insert SIM card here. And of course, we have the notification toggle that's unique to uh, the, the OnePlus line. As far as the cameras in the back, we have similar designs, except that we have a single LED flash, dual tone, fingerprint sensor, and the fingerprint sensor on the OnePlus 3 is in the front. Uh, bottom uh, specs. We'll notice that we have a single firing speaker, USB Type-C support, dual sp uh, this is stereo, dual, gr dual grills, but only one speaker, and we have a headphone jack with a microphone. Let's switch it to the top. Uh, the Elico seems like it has an IR blaster with a microphone where we have nothing else on the top. One of the reasons why I wanted to mention this to you guys is two things. A, they're both 5.5 inch displays, both running full HD uh, resolutions. We have a sim single SIM card uh, slot. I went ahead and put in my T-Mobile SIM. Let's see how it works in the US. Now this is intended for the US market. So obviously US support should be built in directly out of the box. Let's go ahead and put it in. It's recognizing the SIM card. SIM card is detected. It says network detection enabled. And I can see here, so right out of the box, I see 4G LTE and HD voice support, and as well, it looks like the NFC is turned on. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna skip this as I'm gonna be using direct data. 
and it says here use from another android device i'm going to say no thanks i want to go ahead and set it up as a new device uh, one account to, account, uh, to unlock the one so we're going to skip this at this point because it's asking us to set up an account directly with elico enable user experience feedback i'm going to disable this add fingerprint let's go ahead and say start we'll go ahead and set up the fingerprint Continue. I'm going to keep it at the smallest level. So you can set the font size, of course. We have standard view or zoomed in view. Uh, now I'm going to go with standard. I'm not going to go with zoom. Let's go ahead and continue. Restore and transfer. Restore from previous one. Use as a new uh, eco phone. We're going to say continue since we didn't set up from another one. Seems like there's some type of backup option. So we'll say finish, initializing launcher. And here we are on the main home screen. Uh, we have two notifications here. Suggested you log into LE code account. Yeah, we'll set this up later. And then it seems like Wi Fi is turned on. And we'll get in there and then just turn it off for now. Let's, I don't want to start scanning. Uh, the interface is very simple, very clean. Uh, we do have three buttons here. One of them is actually branded with LE. So you have the name LE in here. Your recent app is right here. You can actually scroll down. You can go back into it. Um, of course, you say, you know, clear all and do all of this stuff. You'll notice that your notification panel is a little different than your standard Android device. So if you scroll down from the top, you have your notifications. You don't have any other options. You can manage your notification uh, information by going under manage, this gives you access to be able to turn off and turn on certain notifications for application. This is not where you'd be able to go in and let's say toggle uh, the screen brightness and so on. By pressing the multi, uh, the multi app or the recents app, you'll notice that the toggles are right here. We have the ability of controlling our brightness on the screen, music playback, we have shortcuts for different applications, setting flashlights, calculator, camera, uh, Wi-Fi is in here, data, uh, of course, auto rotation, airplane and mute. And then we can scroll, we have additional one, sort, uh, where it is uh, virtual buttons, adaptive, uh, adaptive brightness, hotspot, Bluetooth, and of course we have battery assistant. Other than that, of course, we have our recent application and then we can click here and close all the recent applications. By default out of the box, I haven't installed anything on it. It looks like Netflix is installed. It looks like all the Google Play services or applications are installed out of the box. There is no additional one. The other thing I want to mention to you guys here, we don't have an app drawer. This is by design. The button that you hear for live, this is actually a, a, screen, a streaming service that's built in directly from Elico and it's going to load their information. We'll get into that in a second. Swiping from the left or going to the left, we have some type of a news media aggregation tool similar to like Blink Feed or anything like that or even um, you just basically set it up. You can go here and then you have different recommendations, gaming, education, news and title, you know, any recommendation of course, movie and theaters. This is just going to go ahead and start looking up different things. Um, I'm not sure about the selection of movies, but we'll hopefully be able to set it up. Let me see here. Yeah, see like here, it pulls up uh, Jimmy Fallon, fails. This looks like it's pulling straight from YouTube. Uh, we'll go back. Uh, as far as the TV setup, I haven't subscribed to anything, but this is based on their subscription service. And you can see here that we have different feeds that we can look from. Um, the intention here that you can actually watch these things live. You know, so if you have live television here, we'll go ahead and turn on one of their feeds. Uh, no Wi-Fi. Okay, of course. So it explains to us. So we can actually go in. It's just going to load the video for me. And this is just what we have here. So oop, we'll go back. Go back once, go back into live TV. Is, I guess, a big deal. It's you can go back um, and then let's go back to other channels. We have entertainment. We have other channels. Of course, we can go favorites, all popular. I'm assuming that right now that this is just displaying all the free content that I have since I don't have actual you know, subscription here. Um, and then, of course, let's see movies. What do we see here? Yeah, this is some of the stuff that we saw on the other end. These are probably just uh, yeah, indie flicks, some of the main free stuff. Accessing setting is pretty simple. You just click the settings option. Uh, this is by default set up this way as if you bring down the notification panel, there is no option to go into settings. And if you hit the recents, the only other place you have the ability to get into settings is through the top right. So depending where you are, if you have multiple home screens, you can move this around. We do have Google Play Store installed. Uh, productivity level, we have a browser, a clock, file manager, contacts, calculator, and email app. So we have an email client built in. And of course, we have a gallery application here. This is just to show us that we haven't taken any pictures. Let's go directly into settings. Airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile network, personal hotspots. We have NFC, VPN, wireless display, and Wi-Fi calling. I went ahead and just turned on Wi-Fi calling for me real quick. I want to see how this is going to work with T-Mobile based. Since this is a T-Mobile based service, calls will be made over Wi-Fi. Wow. Support for Wi-Fi calling out of the box, very, very nice. This is something that very rarely we see. Display, personalized. Display just is just normal information. Font size, you can change it. You can change the sleep timer. Right now it's set to 30 uh, to a minute. I like to keep it at 30 seconds. And of course we have LED notification light. We do have LED support here. So we're gonna keep that on. We'll, uh, we'll be able to check that out in a second. 
Last thing we have here is personalizing. Let's say allow. We have different themes here that you can download. System wallpapers, online themes. You can click that and go directly to the theme store and download whatever you'd like and customize your system. This is very nice and built into the system. Notification management, of course, we saw that. Control center, and then that's basically where we have the customization for, whoop, we'll go back here, um, all these options that we have here. And then we'll notice all the different options that we didn't have before. So let's go back. Uh, then we have Do Not Disturb, dual app. Let's go ahead and look at it. So WeChat is built in by default. This is, uh, if you're familiar with it in the Asian market, this is very popular. And I'm just gonna say yes for now. Actually, we'll go ahead and set it up first. Um, Elioco account, we'll set that up later. I didn't get a chance to. Fingerprint sensor and password, we already did set that up. The LE touch shutter, uh, this is where you're using the fingerprints to turn on the camera. Um, I'm gonna say here, so we're gonna turn it on. So use the fingerprints to open the camera from the lock screen. Uh, let's go ahead and do it this way. I'm gonna change it to fingerprint two. So fingerprint one will open it up regular, fingerprint two takes us directly. So shortcuts on the fingerprint, very nice. Uh, tap to capture uh, uh, picture, of course, and here we have fingerprint management, uh, automatic lock, uh, button but locks instantly, smart lock, of course, if you're trying to do smart locking with different applications to disable the lock screen when you're connected to them via Bluetooth, unknown sources for applications, we're going to turn that on, as I'm going to definitely be using that. Location services, permission, Google, and then system update, of course, we can check that out and see if there's any update. The current version of this OI UI is EUI. This is um, 5.8 and it is updated as of 1026. I am running on the latest version. Date and time, power off, app management. Let's go ahead and go in here. This is where you'd be able to see all installed, running and cached. And then uh, we'll go back. Actually, oh, it looks like oh, this, is, this is basically where we would set all the default applications. And then we'll go back. And then battery right out of the box. Now we didn't get it as full uh, at full uh, battery. We do have it here, status bar percentage. We are at 50%, so it came out 50% out of the box um, with a lot of things that I did not set up. So we're gonna have to definitely check that out. Battery temperature, it, and it gives you the temperature of the battery right out of the box here, which is very nice. Now, as far as storage, let's look at it right about now. It's a 64 gig model, it tells us it's 64 gigs. It says we have used 6.7 uh, 6 gigabytes out of the box and we have available 52.8.82 gigabytes. So that's pretty good. We have Yahoo Weather installed and that's using some of this information and then large file cleanup, we can definitely go. Uh, restore factory default, accessibility, print services, and about phone. Uh, the name of the brand is Le Pro 3, status model number is the LEX727. Android 6.0.1, not Nougat, it's just basically the latest version of Marshmallow. Yeah, like I mentioned before, the EUI is 5.8, CPU is the uh, Snapdragon 821, four cores clocked at 2.35, base bands, of course, uh, build number, user experience, exp and, and then uh, written offer. Uh, overall, pretty good. Uh, really nice to see basically that we have some information. Let's go ahead and go to build number. I wanna see how the uh, developer options look like here. Um, we do have the ability to do OEM unlocks, so that's very good. The USB debugging is installed. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Looks like the slider also gives us the option to expand it and we'll get full notification. Definitely very, very nice to have stereo speakers on a device. So again, went ahead and plugged in my headphones. I'm just gonna listen to a quick song. I'm gonna go to YouTube since I don't have any actual media on this yet, uh, but just to be able to experience the audio playing back straight. Now, it sound, sounds pretty good. It actually does hit some nice bass. It doesn't seem like it's overly loud, which means I'm not hitting a really, when I put it at maximum audio, it still was very comfortable to listen to and it was very deep as far as the audio quality. Let's go ahead and do a quick, a quick tour of the camera itself. Let's open it up. The interface is very simple. It looks like it, uh, it's very good. Touch the focus and then the snapping pictures. Here we are. And here you are. That's a very good one. Uh, we can go very deep. As far as the initial impressions on this device, for $299, you can't go wrong with this device. Even at $399, which is comparable to the way the OnePlus 3 has been marketed at. Um, it has a Snapdragon 821, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of built-in storage, 5.5 full HD display, not quad HD. So that's one thing that's a little different than some of the other offerings. But again, for the price point in the US, this is very comparable to what we've seen. 
Uh, but again, a very nice panel, it looks very good. Uh, you're able to set up basically streaming services directly with the Elico environment. So if you wanna tap into the uh, pure power of what they're offering, you can definitely subscribe to that and I'll have to check that out and give you more feedback on that with the full review. I didn't set up any of my information on this yet, so that'll be next for me. Um, other than that, it looks very promising. Stereo speakers, the front and back facing camera look pretty decent. And as far as the UI, it's very simple and minimalistic. It just, it's an EMUI, or sorry, it's an EUI, which means it's not gonna have any app drawer. If you're not happy with that, definitely installing like Novo or any other app launcher will fix that problem for you. Um, it has a notification, uh, like a, a, a kind of a news or media aggregating tool on the left side of the screen if you swipe, and that gives you the ability to kind of use that. It does have um, Google services installed, the Play Store applications. Um, it does have Adobe Atmos support, as well as a built-in EQ if you go into the music player. Uh, did not have any music on this or even an account to be able to stream that. But again, we'll be in the full review. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you for Elico for allowing us to check out this device. More than likely, we're gonna see some information about this in the sense of just how this device functions. It does have a built-in IR blaster at the top, so we'll check that out. Um, how it holds up and how it performs as far as the 4,700, uh, like 4,070 milliamp power bank. So it's a 4,000 milliamp battery on a device that has a 1080p panel. This should just be crazy to be able to live on this device. So thank you very much. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one.